thanks for the organizers for having me here to, so that I could present my recent results. Um, so, yeah, this is the second uh, proof stake talk. So this joint work with uh, Li Fang and uh, Jonathan Katz. <coughs> okay, the title is How to Mimic Nagamoto's Design, but via the proof stake. So here is the uh, outline. We have three parts. So first, uh, we want to, I want to motivate this. Then I want to show you uh, my new design. And finally, I will try to talk about uh, how to decouple consensus from the data distribution so that we can achieve uh, much better performance. <coughs> okay, why will we mimic uh, Nagamoto's design? So, so I know you guys know Nagamoto protocol very well, but still I want to repeat uh, uh, quite a bit so that uh, you can warm up for my talk. Okay, so Nagamoto design is pretty uh, cool because it's the first uh, consensus by competition. Um, so in Nagamoto design, there are two roles of players, users and uh, miners. So users first uh, broadcast the transactions to the network. And then the miners, they will compete, try to solve some proof of puzzle, <coughs> but follow some uh, rules. And the winning miner uh, is allowed to define the block. And then they can keep generating block after block. And the core of Nagamoto design actually is this proof of puzzle, um, which is based on Haji function. So as I said, proof of puzzle need to follow some rules. First, uh, they need to know what's the context. So typically, so miners will follow the longest chain or the most difficult chain. And uh, they will try to identify some solutions. Here means uh, some nonsense, so that uh, this Haji inequality can be satisfied. Okay, so Nagamoto design is uh, cool because uh, we can show some nice security properties which can be very useful. So for example, some researchers show that they can achieve something called a common prefix. So basically, miners, they're widely distributed, but they are sure that if uh, they prune the latest of a few blocks, they know that the remaining will be the same. And uh, this is very useful. And Nagamoto's design has a, a very, very cute, uh, very nice uh, features. I list uh, some of them. So first is a, a large scale protocol. I mean, large scale means uh, more than uh, 1,000 nodes. And actually, Nagamoto design is the first uh, uh, large scale protocol because uh, the protocol has very nice uh, properties. Uh, the com communication complexity is very, very low. And uh, the protocol is not, a, not a much interaction. So most time, miners will do local computing uh, itself. And the protocol is uh, permissionless or open. So it's easy to join or leave from the system. And uh, you can also see there are other properties, strong, strong security properties. And uh, the protocol is really simple. No fancy advanced uh, crypto tools used. Okay. So as I said, Nagamoto protocol is the first uh, consensus but via competition. So we actually know consensus uh, many years back, like uh, 40 years back. Uh, yeah, 40 years back. Um, but the previous design, it's not uh, uh, very inclusive. So it uh, can be run among like hundreds of nodes. So that says, so we can argue this is more trustworthy because uh, more nodes has been involved, and those nodes are world widely distributed. And um, large scale, beautifully like protocols, I mean, more, lots of interactions protocols. So actually, it has never been stress tested in the real world. I mean, a few groups uh, claiming have new results, but it has never been stress tested. This is very different from a well like, studied Bitcoin Ethereum. Okay, so yeah, that's why Nagamoto, because Nagamoto is cool. So then second question is why Nagam we want to mimic Nagamoto but via proof stake. So that means uh, Nagamoto is uh, cool but still have some caveats. So as the first uh, speaker mentioned, 
So there are some caveats. So the first caveat, uh, so the first uh, thing is, uh, ideally, we expect that the machine, the miners, are world value distributed. But the reality is not. So there are like a small number of mining pools. They dominate the system, right? There's like a famous picture, okay? And this means the system is not very trustworthy as expected. And um, the, the second issue is obvious. So huge waste of computing resource. So we have to waste electricity and uh, this uh, hardware, okay? So, yeah, proof of stake arguably can solve those questions, those, those issues. So, that's the why part. Now, second part is, uh, are there any solution? Okay, so there are solutions. But um, solve this issue, solve this question is pretty, is not trivial. So, pe people made a, maybe it's too tiny. People made a lot of efforts, so you may try use the trust hardware, uh, trust beacon, but uh, there's an obvious uh, drawback, single point failure, right? You may use uh, multi-party communication, VSS, PFT like uh, protocols as I argued before. So those protocols is only for small size network. Okay, not a very trustworthy. And um, yeah, the third uh, part is uh, something uh, I will focus on. So it's Bitcoin-like, it's like model-like protocols. So efforts has been made, okay. And there's a, a more, right? For example, you can hybrid this, this uh, hash inequality and uh, BFD th uh, protocols. So Algorand is a, a good example. So as I argued before, so no BFD-like uh, protocols, large-scale protocols has been uh, stress-tested. Okay. So, so here, this part, I mean, focus on this part. So they are closed the real work is Orbos, uh, Pros, and uh, Genesis from I IOHK group. So the short comparison is uh, the design is very different. And um, our design, our protocol uh, has a faster uh, confirmation time and is more flexible so that new players can join the system. Okay, so in short, so uh, Orbos is like a, chunk of blocks, and then chunk of blocks, and then chunk of blocks. So you will see in this design, it's kind of block and a block and a block. It's really like a, like a Bitcoin design. Okay. So yeah, how can we solve this, right? So I will take a few steps. First step, I will consider um, a restricted adversary. Okay. So since this talk is about a how to mimic uh, Nagamoto's design. So Nagamoto's design is here. The main part of Nagamoto's design is the Hashi, Hashi inequality, right? So this is the context and this is the nuns. Okay. So I remove these uh, uh, transactions on purpose. Okay. So if you see this uh, uh, for a little bit of time, you will see that this nuns is uh, just the random numbers, right? So it has no structure. Now, the observation here is uh, we will bring structure into the solution. So what is the structure? So in proof stake system, so miners, they are proof stake holders, they will join the first join system. That means uh, the player will have an ID, right, which is, uh, is a PK. And then now this, I, we define this solution as a PK and the signature. So here the signature is a unique signature. Unique signature means uh, one message, there's only one signature. Okay, so now if you compare these two, right, very close, but there's a, like, a, like a difference. The solution is with structure. So that means that when we, whenever we want to verify a solution, we will take two steps. First, uh, this is a hash inequality, and second, is this solution has this structure or not, which is a signature verification. Okay, that's the verify side. But the plural side, or the minor side, the winning minor side. So now, in the proof, proof work setting, so all miners, they have to work very, very hard. They will try different analysis, right? Because the analysis has no structure. But here, so each miner will do two things. First, generate this unique signature. Very trivial, right? You can use your cell phone. 
And the second, so you will do this Hashi evaluation. It's very trivial. You can use a cell phone. So that means uh, we can avoid huge computing. So that means this system can, can be moved to like a lightweight like a device. Okay, we don't need like a dedicated hardware, whatever. If you're familiar with um, like uh, nomothetic um, uh, problems, like in cryptogra cryptography, mm -hmm. you can, this could be a, uh, analog. So this is about a third version. Like uh, this is about the decision version of the like uh, DDH and uh, CDH. Okay. Apparently, the decision version is much simpler than the computer computer version. That's why, in this design, the main intuition is we don't need a lot of computing power. Okay. So, yeah, it's a little bit complicated. Let me repeat a little bit. Okay. So I did uh, two modifications. First. We, we introduce this round, which is a uh, time, okay? And the second, we use, uh, introduce this unique signature, okay? And so that uh, we can define this uh, structure, this uh, solution with structure, okay? So, so this uh, first step, the basic version, actually is pretty good, right? You can see, we, because we remove the transaction, uh, we, this part is public information and uh, it's kind of fixed, Right, and this is unique signature, so it will ensure each miner will have only one uh, chance, right? And we can prove this is already secure if the adversary is restricted to follow some strategy, as in Bitcoin. So basically, extending the the longest, extending one position of blockchain. We can prove that. Okay. Um, but uh, as I said, this uh, it's a restricted adversary. Now, what about a generic adversary, like a arbitrary adversary? So, so real world adversary, they, he may can uh, multiple like a position in the blockchain, right? Or he can play like a smarter uh, or crazy tricks. So, yeah, this part is pretty challenging. Um, so, so if. Uh, our adversary extend multiple positions. So intuitively, he may be able to amplify his uh, uh, portion of stake, right? So this is known as, uh, um, many people know that, uh, nothing at stake, the famous uh, attack in proof of stake. Okay. So, so now, so let's try to think about uh, nothing at stake a, a little bit more. So we know that if we extend the blockchain from multiple positions, so it's for flow, the amplification rate of your stake will be larger than one, right? But, um, but is there any bound? So there's a, we have a main discovery is uh, for certain number of, uh, for certain protocols, as uh, the basic version we just designed before is carefully designed protocols. So this amplification rate can be amplified, uh, can be upbounded, okay? So this upbound actually is a Q uh, constant, is E. Is a uh, ULA uh, is E is a two point seven. Okay, and um, if we play some um, some strategy to extend the, the blockchain, I call the two greedy. I will explain to what is a two greedy. Okay, so then we can also amplify the stake quite a bit, but it's smaller than this two point seven. Okay, so based on this observation. So we may use, try to use nothing at stake to defend against nothing at stake. Because adversary, anyway, will play this like uh, crazy attacks, right? So now we also let the honest guys to play nothing at stake, but it's kind of restricted version. So that's something we call the two greedy or one greedy. Okay. So I will explain uh, one greedy, two greedy in the next slide. But uh, before that, let's show you one table so basically, if we play the same strategy as in Bitcoin, good guys and bad guys play the same strategy, we can have this 51% of only majority assumption to ensure the security. But if uh, the bad guy play things in a crazy way, only the guy play the same strategy as in Bitcoin, if uh, the protocol has 73% of honest stake, that protocol is also secure. 
And if uh, we play, let the honest player people play something uh, more aggressive, then we can uh, improve the threshold, like 57. Okay. So now, what is a, I call a, this is a one greedy or two greedy strategy? Okay. So in proof stake, in Bitcoin, we know that there's a long chain or the basic chain, there's only one. But here, we will have a, a set of uh, uh, best chains. It's called a best chain set. So we will try to define what is the best chain set. Okay. So we have uh, three, three steps. First, we need to identify the long chain. Second, we need to define, uh, we need to care about, uh, we will care about the distance to the long chain. There are some blocks that are really close to the long chain. So here, so, this is, I put zero means uh, the distance to the long chain, the distance is zero, right? The, this is the long chain, okay, right? And I put a one, one means uh, the distance to the long chain is uh, one. And a two, the distance to the, block, the long chain is, uh, is, is, is two, okay. So, so what is the one greedy, right? So we will basically extend the, the, the blocks within the distance uh, is one, okay. So we will extend the blue blocks. So on this guy, we'll extend this block, this block, and this block, and this block, okay. Okay, so the intuition is we will extend the blocks uh, which are very really close to the, the long chain. Okay, that's the intuition. So these will be very useful for arguing about uh, the security. So uh, adversary, if this is not carefully defined, the adversary may play some strategy so that like a long fork could be generated. So with this nice structure, so long fork will, won't, won't, will never be generated. So the blocks, on this guy will always generate the blocks uh, uh, closely, you know. And then um, similarly, we can define two greedy, right? Two greedy means uh, the distance to the, the long chain is uh, two, okay, all these blue blocks. Yeah, so we also consider, to be more practical, we also consider the length, you know. So the, it's, it's, uh, the longest chains, and the second long chain, and the third long chains, and so on. Okay, so then we can, based on this um, structure, if all these guys, play this nice strategy, let's say two greedy or one greedy, then we can show that whether adversary play what kind of strategy, we don't care. So if 50% uh, of the stake are honest, then the system is secure. It's secure means uh, we can achieve nice security properties. Yes, in academia, we some common flex, chain quality, and other properties. And we can also play, prove the basic scheme the basic thing means uh, the honest guy play the similar strategy as in Bitcoin, just to extend the long chain, okay. So if honest guy have 73% uh, of stake, we are still okay. Okay, this is um, the, the, I don't know any question. You can ask me a question after the, uh, after the talk, okay. So that's the second step. So basically we can, uh, we have a, a novel design to ensure all these guys can extend the chain, uh, can defend against the malicious guys. So all these guys will extend the, the blocks which is close to the, the long chain, okay. So if the block is far from the long chain, the all these guys will not work on that. Adversary may want to work on that, but the all these guys will not work on that. So eventually, this chain will not receive a lot of support. So this main chain will be faster than this uh, uh, adversary uh, uh, favorite chain. And uh, there are more steps because, for example, new play how can new players join the system, right? So we also have a new strategy to ensure that. And uh, so we, people, as, uh, as I said, we remove the transaction from the block, now we can use a digital signature, we can add the transaction 
to the blockchain easily. And there are more, right? You can have a long list. So the main point is uh, the design really close to Bitcoin design. So that means many, you have fancy results in, about Bitcoin. We may be able to move to this side easily, right? For example, we can change this to, into a non flat model easily. And uh, we can uh, adjust uh, the difficulty very easily, right? We can also borrow these uh, novel ideas about uh, uh, incentives to the, our, our system. Yeah. And we can also show some, with uh, some non trivial things, we can also uh, do post quantum security. So we have a paper. Um, the early version is online, but uh, if you want to see the latest version, yeah, send me an email. So this is uh, the theory part, and we also have a, um, a system part. So, so the protocol I just described is uh, the engine of a new project called the Fractal Platform. You can check the link. Okay. This is a green leaf. It's like an environment-friendly uh, platform. So we have uh, experiments. And you can see, this is the chain, the chain. This is the chain, looks like this, okay. And this is Jenna's block. And uh, actually, yeah, this is uh, even like uh, some experiment results. So, yeah, so for example, this table says, if we, uh, the, we tune the greedy parameters, it means uh, uh, if uh, we allow uh, not too greedy, we can improve uh, into three greedy, four greedy, whatever. Then this weight will be become not larger. Okay. So that's the, the 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 consensus part. How can we design a proof stake uh, uh, consensus which is very similar to uh, Nagamoto's design? Okay. So in the remaining. I want to talk about uh, uh, something, some new results we have. So we want to decouple consensus and the data distribution. Okay. So, so Nagamoto's design is really cool. I, I really like uh, Nagamoto's design. However, so it's uh, the, like uh, the first design, right? So many things are not a fine grained. And um, in particular, so the miner play multiple roles. Okay, miner play multiple roles, which is not uh, necessarily be good. So in particular, so in Nagamoto's design, um, consensus and the block and the data distribution are played by one 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 miner, uh, the, the same miner. Okay, and if you look at this um, picture, you will see. So Nagamoto's design, or the proof stake design we just discussed, is not optimal, right? So for example, the transactions are broadcast uh, twice, here and here, right? And also the transaction broadcast uh, is a bonding. So it's all about uh, more than 90% uh, uh, the bandwidth. Okay. So, yeah. So before I show uh, the new design, let's uh, try to see some finding we, we had. So we find this uh, throughput should be less than the upper bound, the average upper bound. So upper bound, so, sorry, upload bandwidth is uh, the, the bottleneck. So the throughput is uh, less than the average upload uh, bandwidth. So yeah, we, we can easily argue about that. And the consequence is, uh, is interesting. If you if the, each node has this like uh, uh, capability, uh, 20 Mbps, then that means uh, if each trans each sorry, if each if each transaction has um, 500 bytes, so there's an upbound. That means uh, it's less than uh, 5,000 transactions. So there are many projects that claim they have. A, Huge number of transactions, but um, yeah, there might be, must be some, some they had something, right? So now, our goal, uh, my, our question is: Can we achieve the optimal throughput? Can we find a better way to 
yeah, to do the data distribution. Okay. So here, we want to decouple um, the consensus from the data distribution. So we have, a, uh, uh, so these are users, right? So previously users send the transaction, broadcast the transaction to the miners. Now we introduce some, uh, a third rule called uh, backbone packers. Okay. So those rule, those players, they will, yeah, they will um, take care of the data dis uh, distribution. Okay. And uh, now we don't need to use a broadcast. We use a routing. And uh, yeah. And uh, here, so previously, um, so previously the in the mining part, so the regular data uh, re regular data block will be broadcast by the by the miner, right? So now we don't need to. Uh, uh, broadcast the miner. We will do broadcast the, 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 some headers, like a tiny, uh, what we call the meta blocks. And uh, these uh, packers can also like, uh, continue to broadcast uh, uh, pseudo blocks. You can view this as a, a data block. Okay. So the main idea is that we will decouple the rule of uh, uh, consensus, right? This uh, miner will take up consensus and uh, the, the blocker distribution, so mainly uh, by packers. Okay, so we have uh, multiple like uh, methods, and uh, so we can achieve nearly optimal throughput. Okay, we can achieve this, and we can also achieve nearly optimal block uh, propagation time. So that means uh, we can also uh, improve the confirmation time. So finally, we also have uh, implementation, and uh, this is a setting. Um, so the input rate is a uh, 5K TBS, and then we try to use the regular packers, uh, with, which means uh, the capability is uh, 20 uh, MPPS, and it turns out that there's, the system cannot survive, it's crashed, right? Because uh, the limit is a 5K uh, TBS. And then we have this uh, very cool observation. The throughput is, uh, must be less than this uh, um, average upload bandwidth, right? So that means that we will improve this, uh, the packers. We improve this quite a bit. And now the bandwidth, uh, the limit is uh, seven, uh, 7K, more than 7, 7K TBS, and now we, our throughput can achieve uh, 5, uh, 5K. So, so this is uh, the simulation. Yeah, so that's uh, um, my talk, and um, we have uh, some write-ups if you are interested. Yeah, send me an email. Okay, we have time for a few questions. Can you step out? Hi. Um, I failed to see how this design prevents grinding attacks on the different possible payloads. Uh, you mean... Uh... A miner can try many different payloads, and whenever he signs for the payload, uh, he creates different... Uh, contexts for the next block after the one that he's currently mining, so then. Yeah, but uh, we follow this uh, long uh, chain. Uh, yeah. We follow this long chain strategy. So we follow the, the long chain. Long chain is the best chain. Of course, but the, the, the miner can try millions of possible uh, different uh, payloads. Yeah, for okay, the, that's, the, that's, that's very, very cool. So if you look at the design, Sorry, I didn't get the question at the beginning. So we have, a, we have a two parts. Step one, we, in our design, we, first we have a, something what we call the core chain. So we don't have a, the payloads. We remove the payloads on purpose, right? We, we consider these payloads. Uh, we, we, we consider 
uh, something called a core chain without the payloads. So then you cannot play the trick by manipulating the payloads so that you can increase your, your opportunity. So the core chain never commits to any payload? No. But uh, later, once we have a core chain, we have, uh, we have multiple steps. I didn't, I had something. So once we have the core chain, we will have uh, um, this step. We can add the transaction by using a signature, by using digital signature. And that signature does not become part of the context for the next block on yeah, the Yeah, there's uh, some, some details. So, okay. so. Okay, take it offline. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, we can talk offline. So the paper is, uh, is, uh, is, is online. Um, thank you for walking us through the consensus protocol. So I have a question regarding uh, uncle chain generation. So uh, as, far, as far as I understand, um, like a, a node can decide whether or will decide whether it can build an, an, a next block on top depending on its hash value. So, um, but that's very fast process, right? So a lot of nodes could decide that they can build a, um, a, a new block, then propagate that block, and no nodes in their neighborhood um, would then potentially build also other nodes on top, uh, and it would take a comparatively long time for this, uh, that information to propagate through the network compared to just extending the chain. So I have the feeling that would generate tons of uncle chains. How do you suppress that? Yes. Um, sorry, can you, can you, can you uh, summarize your question? Okay, so, um, sorry. so how do you address the problem of uncle chains? So you had a picture there where um, you had to the, for, the chain's forking, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, but that information about a, a, an uncle chain needs to propagate through the network. So if I'm a node and I'm building a new block on top, I need to tell other nodes and they, and they will propagate that information. So by the time that information about my new block has reached somebody in the back, they might already have spawned a completely different uncle chain because hashing is so fast. Uh, but maybe you can take that question offline. Yeah, I'm offline. Feeling it's very specific. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Any other questions? And the next speaker, please uh, set up. And I, I also have a quick question. Mm -hmm. I think you commented that in some prior works, uh, new players cannot join security, while in your system, uh, you can. Can you elaborate on what you mean yeah, by Yeah, this joining? part is uh, it's a pretty subtle. So. Uh, so basically, okay. when the new player joins the system, so 